How many hot dogs do you eat in a day, Tim? I'd rather not answer that. Thank you, though. Did you eat hot dogs today? Not exactly. And why are you bringing this up? Well, you have mustard on your shirt, and frankly, your burps reek of hot dogs. I had a hot dog bowl earlier today. Yes, I did. And what is a hot dog bowl? It's like a burrito bowl, but it's chopped up hot dogs in a big old bread bowl. So like a much larger, less healthy hot dog? Can I go? I'm starving. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at the hot dog bowl from Detroiters. The show accurate version is pretty easy. All we need is a whole bunch of hot dogs, which rather than grill or fry, I'm going to boil. Seems like the most belligerent thing to do. Then for the bread bowl, I'm going straight to the source, Panera, who, as it turns out, will let you buy a bread bowl just by itself. The hot dogs have been boiled for three minutes, so I'm going to pat them dry, chop them up, and pile them high and deep. All told, just about five hot dogs worth of hot dogs. Now, obviously, it would be crazy to eat this thing without condiments. A TikTokian drizzle of ketchup and mustard, and why not, a little jewel of relish atop the crown. And there you have it, the hot dog bowl. Just chopped up hot dogs in a big old bread bowl. Which, as it turns out, not very super easy to eat. Especially if you have a beard or you're not a snake. But no matter how you eat it, there's no question that this thing is bad for you. So can we make a hot dog bowl that scratches the hot dog itch, while also being one of those healthy, super expensive bowls where you pick a base, two sides, and a protein? First thing is last, the protein, for which I'm going to make a sort of hot dog flavored cure. Starting with 240 grams of kosher salt, 11 grams of pink curing salt, 2 tablespoons of granulated sugar, 3 bay leaves, 3 3 tablespoons of sweet paprika, 1 tablespoon whole allspice berries, 2 teaspoons each coriander seed, white and black peppercorns, 1 tablespoon each dried onion flakes and mustard seeds, and a half dozen or so crushed cloves of garlic. To this we're going to add a half gallon of distilled water. The ratio of water and salt is important to get right for your cut of meat, so make sure you use a cure calculator like the one at AmazingRibs.com. Now here's the meat, a relatively lean flat cut brisket, which I'm going to place in a casserole and attempt to cover with our cure, which I tried to make work for a ridiculous amount of time before finally giving up and placing it in a big old cambro. Once again, by virtue of the cure calculator, we're curing this in the fridge for six days, after which time it's properly pickled and ready to cook, and it seems fittingly fussy to do it via sous vide. First patting it thoroughly dry, please excuse my pajamas, but it is almost midnight, because once it's dried and sealed in a vac seal bag, this guy's headed into a 180 degree Fahrenheit water bath for 12 hours. Normally, if you were making corned beef, you just boil it for two to three hours, but hopefully this slower, lower cooking method is going to produce a juicier, tenderer -er piece of beef, which we're going to once again pat dry before turning it into hot dog pastrami. First, painting the whole thing down with bright yellow ballpark mustard, which is going to act as an adhesive for our spices. Three tablespoons black peppercorns and one tablespoon coriander seeds lightly cracked, two tablespoons brown sugar, one tablespoon sweet paprika, one tablespoon onion powder, and two teaspoons garlic powder. Tiny whisk to combine and sprinkle liberally, making sure no square inch of mustard goes unspiced. Then this guy's headed onto a 225 degree Fahrenheit smoker for anywhere from two to four hours, giving us plenty of time to consider our sides. First up, in place of relish, I'm going to make a dill smashed cucumber salad, slicing three small cucumbers into one inch rounds and lightly smashing vertically until split. Toss these with a pinch of kosher salt in a colander set over a bowl, which is going to help draw out excess moisture so we don't end up with a wet salad. While that drains for 15 minutes, we're going to make a light dressing. One clove of fresh garlic, crushed, always use the back of your knife for scraping, one teaspoon lightly cracked yellow mustard seeds, one tablespoon white vinegar, two teaspoons of extra virgin olive oil, and a handful of roughly chopped fresh dill. Go ahead and give this mixture a gestural tiny whisking, fetch your cucumbers, discard the accumulated cucumber liquid in the bottom of the bowl, repurpose said bowl for dressing, pour the dill mixture over top, and toss to combine, being sure to taste for seasoning. And this came out nice, really light and fresh. Definitely not relish, but this is also definitely not a hot dog. Next up, some marinated cherry tomatoes. I'm quartering one pint of cherry tomatoes, and then for the marinade, combining one one and a half tablespoons of white vinegar, a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil, one teaspoon Dijon mustard, one crushed clove of garlic, one teaspoon sugar, an eighth teaspoon celery salt, and one sixteenth of a teaspoon each ground allspice and cloves in an attempt to bring some of the ketchup flavors. Tiny whisk the marinade until thick and glossy, add the tomatoes, and I'm also going to add a little bit of thinly sliced red onion. Toss to combine, taste for seasoning, and allow to marinate for four to six hours, ideally overnight. Last up, the carbohydrate base, and since we're trying to imitate a hot dog bun or bread bowl, 
bowl, I figured the most appropriate stand-in possible was wheat berries, the berries from which flour is milled. Cook according to manufacturer instructions or until pleasantly al dente. Remove from the heat, drain, and season simply with a pinch of kosher salt, a twist of freshly ground black pepper, and a little drizzle of olive oil. You can serve this hot, cold, or room temperature. I'm going with the latter. Meanwhile, our hot dog pastrami is ready to come off the smoker. You want to pull it when it reaches about 195 degrees Fahrenheit at its thickest point. Now, ideally, you want to rest this in a cooler for about two hours, but it's actually lunchtime and you can't skip lunch. So I'm just going to rest it under foil for about 20 minutes. So let's grab the Babish Super Slicer and hack us off a hunk. And what was immediately apparent was that I did not cure it for long enough. As you can see, the pink of the cure did not make it all the way to the center of the meat. Probably needed a couple more days. But that being said, it still looks very juicy and tender. So I'm hacking off some half inch slabs and preparing to plate. First, a bed of our cooked wheat berries, very simply seasoned, just like every bowl place does. A little pile of our smashed cucumber salad, a little pile of our marinated cherry tomatoes, and a little big pile of our hot dog brisket. And there you have it, the hot dog bowl, in the style of a venture capital startup franchise hopeful. But does it taste anything like a hot dog? And the answer is actually kind of a little. The brisket definitely has hot dog flavor, and the sides, while not accurate, do get the message across, like, uh, Google Translate. But is it any healthier? The original hot dog bowl rings in at more than 1,300 calories, 65 grams of fat, more than 4,000 grams of sodium, 136 grams of carbs, 29 grams of sugar, and 34 grams of protein. Meanwhile, our hot dog bowl only costs 840 calories, 35 grams of fat, 2,100 milligrams of sodium, 81 grams of carbs, 9 grams of sugar, and 40 grams of protein. In other words, you could eat this whole bowl plus one entire hot dog with bun and condiments, and it'd still be healthier than the hot dog bread bowl. But lastly, and most importantly, does it scratch the itch? And the answer is not really. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go have a hot dog right now. I'm starving.